What is edging? And why would anybody want to do it? You're in the right place if these questions are on your mind. I'm Lisa Welsh and I'm a sex educator who is dedicated to helping busy couples like you to have more fun in the bedroom. And one such technique that could help is edging. So this is essentially a way to get bigger orgasms through repeatedly withholding and denying orgasm, right? So you or your partner are going to follow this technique where you bring sexual stimulation up to the peak, to the pinnacle, to the very edge of orgasm, and then slow right back down again, and then come up again to the edge, right? So you're going to the edge of orgasm and then coming down again before finally going over the edge. Now, why on earth would anybody want to do that? Because it sounds frustrating, right? I know, but the reason being, something like 65% of women find that their orgasm is longer and more intense after edging. Wow, yes, that is something worth listening into. And in fact, edging was initially published like in 1965 in the, in the Journal for Sexual Medicine by a doctor who described it as the stop-start technique. And his technique was designed to help men who were experiencing premature ejaculation. So it is also a way to like build self-awareness, build awareness of yourself and your own bodily response and to learn more about reading your partner's pleasure cues. So now you know what is edging, now let's look at how you can use edging to help to build more intense, more satisfying orgasms by continually building up that sexual tension and excitement, reducing it and then building it up again, right? There is a little bit more to it than that. So step number one, as always, is to communicate. You need to talk beforehand and set boundaries and safe words. Establish what both of you want from this situation and what you don't want, right? So you're gonna set limits. Make sure that you both feel comfortable and respected throughout the whole edging experience. And if you suddenly change your mind halfway through and you decide, uh-uh, I don't want you to edge anymore, I want to have this orgasm, then have a safe word in place. Because what you might notice is that when playing with edging with a partner, there is a power role, right? There is somebody in a position of dominance who is doing the stimulating and deciding when to withhold the orgasm, deciding how long to deny the orgasm, and then deciding to let you orgasm, right? And so that means that there's somebody in the position of submissive who is allowing and consenting this to happen, right? So at any point, you might say, okay, in your initial communication, let's try edging twice. I would, I'm happy for you to get me to that point twice. And then you can also agree maybe on how to pause because there's a couple of different ways of doing that too. So get that established, get a safe word in place, and then you know that everybody's gonna be respected and comfortable throughout. Step number two is to stimulate yourself or your partner as you normally would. What are your favorite methods of sexually stimulating? So if, for example, you're gonna be stroking the clitoris, do your normal practices, maybe you're orbiting the clitoris, going circles, circles, building up, building up. Maybe you're doing thrusts on the shaft of the penis, you're building up pleasure, and you're reading your own body cues or your partner's body cues, and you're noticing when they're getting close to orgasm. Now, it's important to know that for some men and people with penises, they have a point of no return, right? The point at which ejaculation is going to happen no matter what you do, even if you stop right? So you learn that. Learn to read each other's cues so that you can see, okay, whoa, I can't get to a nine out of 10 with this person. Maybe I can only get to an eight. Maybe I need to tone it down a little bit, right? So you're starting off stimulation as normal up to the point, which is different for everybody and can be different on different days. And that's why this is a learning process. So then when you get to that point at which you've decided, okay, this is enough, now we're gonna calm it down. There are three different ways that you can choose to calm it down. And number one is stop all touch, right? There's like cold turkey edging, where you're gonna stop touch completely for maybe two seconds, five seconds, 30 seconds, the choice is yours and this is for you to experiment with. But you've brought up the stimulation, you've brought the person to like close to orgasm, whether that's a six or a nine out of 10, you decide. And then you're gonna stop everything. Then they can breathe. Whew, they can feel all of the endorphins running around their body. Maybe everything becomes hypersensitive at that point, right? So that is your first choice. You can get hands off, cold turkey, stop stimulation. Another choice is to slow it down, right? So if you're getting faster and faster and faster, you're building up, building up, building up, and then you're gonna slow it down, slow it right down. So you're changing speed, you're continuing the same kind of stimulation, 
maybe that feels great or maybe it doesn't feel great, right? That could feel really wonderful for some people because that's like you reach this high pinnacle and then you're still like on the waves, you're on the waves, you're on the waves, but you're not like there anymore. So changing the speeds can be the second way to approach edging. The third way to approach edging is to distract, like a complete change of stimulation. So say, for example, you're stimulating the clitoris, the clitoris, the clitoris, yay, yay, yay. Stop the clitoris, move on to the nipple, right? Or move on to the scalp or another erogenous zone. It could be enough to totally like, whoa, what's going on there? The body's like, wow, okay, that feels good though. So you're distracting the body away from the pinnacle of pleasure by stimulating another area, right? Some people like to tap right? That's another way of like almost completely distracting your body by another sensation happening. So those are the three things you can do, right? Stop altogether, cold turkey. You can slow it right down or you can distract with a completely different kind of sensation. Now, if you're doing edging with a penis, the other thing that you can do is actually squeeze the head of the penis as they reach that point before they get to the point of no return. As they get closer to that, you can actually squeeze the head of the penis Ooh, to slow down and help them to start to build up again. Now you can choose how long you hang away from the edge. It can be a couple of seconds or it can be 30 seconds or more. That is up to you when you're playing. You can decide, 10 seconds is enough. This is a great time when safe words are a good idea, right? You can say, maybe wait for five seconds and then say your safe word to mean start again, right? You have to decide that in advance. And the next step is to go back to the pleasurable stimulation. So you've cooled off and now you're gonna start again and build up the tension, build up the excitement and the anticipation and the arousal, la la la. Because if you understand the way that human arousal works, the very simplified model is that we have arousal, then we have plateau, and then we have orgasm and then resolution, right? So it's like a four phase thing that happens. But what we're playing around with here is the plateau, right? So it's that period, it's like a few seconds before orgasm happens, so you're aroused, orgasm isn't quite happening, it's like simmering, it's about to reach the boil, and then that's where we're playing with, we're playing with the plateau, right? So that's why it can be tricky. But you wanna keep on building arousal, plateau, arousal, plateau, arousal, plateau. How many times do you want to repeat it? Well, it's up to you. Usually two or three times is enough, to be honest, and it can get harder and harder to resist. Harder to resist the urge to let go and experience orgasm, right? That is what makes this so exciting. And of course, the final stage of edging is when you and or your partner are ready to let go and fully embrace the pleasure. This is when you let yourself or your partner reach orgasm and have the full on experience of all of that frustration and anticipation and build up and excitement. <sighs> and hopefully it is gonna feel blimmin' amazing. So edging can be a really great way to boost pleasure and intimacy if done with practice and communication. But of course, there are always challenges in real life. And so challenge number one, as I mentioned, is that it can be quite hard to determine the point of no return because you might find that you accidentally go too far and then you orgasm, which is not the biggest problem in the world, but obviously this is a challenge when you're first learning about edging. Obstacle number two is that patience is hard. It can be really, really difficult to hold yourself back, especially if you're edging alone. And it can be very tempting to want to just go and have an orgasm and you can feel the orgasm is so close and then you're just gonna let it go that can be really really hard and obstacle number three is that for some people this can be frustrating and nothing else right sometimes with some people when they practice edging the orgasm can vanish or just be like me like a little half orgasm. Now that can be super frustrating. So if that is the case for you, if you find that edging doesn't do it for you and in fact just makes you irritated, then take this off of your pleasure agenda. But for everybody else, why not give it a try? It could potentially make you last longer in bed, it could potentially give you longer and more intense orgasms, and it can certainly teach you more about yourself and your partner. That's why I think edging is certainly worth giving a try. So did you like this video? Now you know what is edging, how to do it, and the benefits that it can give you in the bedroom. If you would like to learn more about female pleasure specifically, then I have a video for you. It is 10 secrets to female orgasm, and I go in depth with 10 realistic ways that she really wants you to know all about how to have the best time in the bedroom with her. And that's not all. 
why don't you head over to inbedwithlisa.com forward slash guide. I will tag it in the description below, but I have created two free sexy date night ideas for you that you can literally follow step by step and have more fun in the bedroom tonight. And along with that, I've given 26 quick ideas for you to implement to have more fun in the bed right now. Now don't say I don't give you anything. I hope you enjoy those. Thank you so much for sticking around and I'll see you next time.